All right. If you guys watched the last video on my first couple of little portable power boxes, solar generators, whatever that I built, um, if you didn't see that one, go check it out. Um, the first box I built was on reclaimed 18650 cells. This one is on a Life PO4. However, I do need to swap it for a deep cycle because I do believe the one that's in there is just a starting battery. So anyway, I alluded at the end of that video that I was going to go into this one, which is my latest build. We'll do the quick spin around here. Um, this is a complete solar generator, power box, Bluetooth, power speaker. Um, so this one, this one was a lot of fun. So I'll go over all of this and um, yeah, there's some things I could have done better, but I'll get into those and, and why we did that and stuff in a minute. So first of all, it is in the Pure Outdoor um, mono price 9.9 .9 liter uh, container, box, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was waterproof. It is not now, obviously, um, but that's what the box started as. It was all of like 27 bucks on Amazon. This thing is, is a tank for, for that price. This thing is awesome. Um, so... Basically, what we have is all your standard solar generator stuff. This plug runs the two, or switch, runs the two USBs. I have the standard 2.1 amp, as well as the QC3 and power delivery ports there. So those are run off of that switch. This switch runs the two 12-volt cigarette lighter style power plugs. Um, that I can use to run like my CPAP when I'm camping, um, as well as I could run an inverter or um, anything else. I've got a like a 12 volt heated blanket, stuff like that, that we can use while we're camping and all that stuff too. So that's what that switch does. The middle switch is, in a sense, it's tied to this switch here. So basically the one on the end here is for the Bluetooth amp that's inside. This has a 100 watt um, amplifier, Bluetooth amplifier in it. So this turns that on. When you turn it on, Bluetooth mode, she comes on and tells you that she's ready to rock and roll. And then these speakers also have a cool little effect of when I switch this, they have LEDs in them. So it's got all the cool factors. So I'll go over those in a second when we open this up. So basically that runs the Bluetooth amp and that just runs the speakers, the speaker LEDs. Um, I am going to label all of these eventually when I find my label maker. So basically I left them separate right now. I could have left those on the same switch, but I left them separate because if nothing else, you could always just use these as some ambient lighting. Obviously it's not much when there's other light around, but at night set this by the door to your camper, your tent, whatever your car, it would at least let you know where where you needed to go, where you needed to be. So that's why I left them separate. That was just how I did it. Um, I can always change it later if I need. This switch controls the Renogy 10 amp PWM solar charge controller that's tucked inside. I'll show you in just a second. So that runs that. Basically, I switched it so that it's not continuously hooked up to the battery creating parasitic draw. So this battery meter basically has its own built-in switch. So I didn't put it on one of the switches on the front. Try and cover up my lights here. I know my LED brights are, are kind of giving some glare here. So this little uh, battery meter is awesome. I love this thing. Obviously I've got this thing fully charged up right now or close to it. So um, I think about all I was doing with this the other day was charging my phone and my laptop with it. So. Um, it's still mostly charged, um, but that obviously gives you all of your different info, all your your power in, your power out, all of that kind of stuff through that. And no, this, the handle does not bump that. I was worried that that was going to bump that. My hand does every now and then, but it is what it is. So um, I could always put a, another master switch on it if I wanted to. But as of right now, that that doesn't work or doesn't hit the hit the power button, so it doesn't inadvertently turn on. So basically switching around here to the side, I've got an XT60. This is on its own fused connection straight to the battery. 
So this is how I can charge it from AC. So I have one of the, um, what is it? The Red Odo uh, 20 amp Red Odo battery charger. I just nipped off the alligator clips, put an XT60 on there. So this would be for fast charging from grid power if I wanted. So um, that's on its own its own uh, individual fuse and it's also using um, 12 gauge power wire that runs directly to the battery in the shunt. So that's its own own connection there. Um, but what that also does since basically this is just running through um, a fuse straight to the battery, um, I also have the Best Tech 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Yes, this is some sort of off purple pinky color. I did order red. I was expecting to get red, but this apparently is what Best Tech calls red nowadays. So um, it is what it is. It's just an inverter. So I've got that on some high temp 12 gauge wire as well. And all it does is just plugs in right here. So that basically creates a direct connection right straight to the battery runs in right there and then basically just so this isn't hanging out here i just pull that off tuck it back down there out of the way so i do have 110 volt power capabilities um, all i did was fold over that middle section of the bracket drill a hole in there and then i'm just it's just screwed into these ribs on the back it has ribs just like this on the back so basically it just folds over the edge, put a screw right through there. That way I'm not punching another screw into the box worrying about hitting the battery or anything like that. So um, also on the sides, you see, as I showed earlier, these are the Pile Audio, the four inch Marine speakers. They are like a shallow mount. They're incredibly shallow. I'll show you as soon as we pop the top here. Um, that's the only way I was able to get these to fit. So it kind of sucks in the fact of I've got speakers that are kind of, you know, this isn't really a directional unless you turn it this way, but then you don't really get the stereo effect because you're only getting either a right or left channel. But that was the only way I could make it fit. You'll see when I pop this open and you see how much space this battery takes up, you'll understand why. This thing's got the lead time 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. And everything else in here is incredibly packed in here. So we'll go over all of this. So first off, we have the lead time 12 volt, 50 amp hour plus lithium iron phosphate battery. That pretty much takes up that entire that entire cavity in there. There's just enough. If I can get these wires to slide out of the way, you can see right down in there. Those are the pile audio speakers they're they're actually really cool because they're super shallow mount um so they do this is the xt60 fused connection this is the main connection that goes up here to the fuse block um so here if i can pull the charge controller out of the way there you can see a little bit better shot of those speakers and just how shallow they really are i mean i think it's like what maybe an inch and three quarter maybe or something like that mounting depth um they're actually really slick and they they sound decent they sound pretty darn good for compared to any of the other little bluetooth speakers on the market they they do a pretty good job so um battery negative runs down kind of underneath that speaker comes up this is the 100 amp shunt that is connected to the meter that pops throughout there um, and then obviously it feeds the main fuse panel here for all of the outputs. These are all also using, um, high temp silicone 12 gauge wiring to feed the USBs. At first I had some, um, 14 gauge not silicone. And when I was charging my laptop off of the 65 watt power delivery, they got just ever so slightly warm. So I went ahead and swapped them out for... Um, a bigger gauge and the high temp silicone. So I haven't had any issues since then. I did toss some uh, hot glue over the connectors there just 
to help keep me from, as I'm working in here or whatever, keep me from shorting anything out. These are the 12 volts, same thing, 12, 12 gauge high temp wiring. Um, the smaller wiring here is what feeds the Bluetooth amp. So I saw a couple of the other guys that have put Bluetooth amps in these. Um, I know Ice Hole Power, they have that little square, little blue amp that they've been using in theirs. I think it's in their Bad Mofo box or whatever that you can get from them. The only thing that everybody's been complaining about is that crazy tune that it plays when you first turn it on and it's loud as hell and there's no real way to turn it off and it just annoys the crap out of everybody. So I avoided that one. I found this one on Amazon. So I went with this one. It is a little bit bigger, but it did come with both a, a big, thick, um, like a Lexan board or Lexan piece on the bottom of the circuit board. Um, it gives you these little standoffs and then this top protection board so that basically once you screw this all together, it basically protects itself fairly well. Um, and then it has a little volume knob. I was trying to find a way to where I could pop that volume knob out and have it come out external. There just isn't a way to do that with this battery in here. There's just no room. Um, but the other thing that I was seeing on those other amps, those other Bluetooth amps, was they seemed to run better on 24 volts than they did 12. So I was prepared that that might happen with this one. So I actually bought one of the boost converters um, to go from 12 to 24 volts. What I found was I didn't need it. This amp, whether I was feeding it 12 volts or 24 volts, did not make any difference in the sound quality. The sound quality is just fine through these. The reviews and stuff on those other ones were saying that if you could boost them to 24 volts, it, it improved the sound quality considerably on those ones. So um, I don't know. I'm not... As far as what I can tell and what I'm going to use this for, this thing is working perfectly fine on 12 volts. Plus, it saves me from having to run that um, boost converter and find a place to try and stuff it in here. So, um, it's working just fine. Basically, I just leave the knob about halfway, um, and then the rest I just control off my phone. If I need it louder, I can just pop it open and adjust it that way. So, that, that thing I'm pretty impressed with. The speakers, um, for being like 40 bucks or whatever they were, um, and this thing was like, I don't know, what, 15, 20 bucks, something like that. I don't remember how much it was. Um, pretty slick. I'm actually pretty impressed with, with that. And having that ability added to this box, I thought was pretty slick. So, um, don't think there's a whole lot else. These switches, um, if you can see, I've got a little hot glue down in here just to kind of fill these. They didn't mount flush because obviously the top of the box is curved and there was, I had to kind of shave just a little bit of it. They had a couple little ribs right here to shave some of them. I know they're not straight. That bugs me too. Um, and yeah, I had some switches in here that when you would switch them on, they had the little LED. But the thing that I found with those is they had a third, a third connection in here that you had to, to run ground basically to give a ground to those LEDs so that when you turn the switch on, the LED would come on. So basically I had three connections then, and the way this box is designed, this center part right here that is recessed, comes down right here. And so you have this tiny, tiny little channel right in here where all your connections have gotta be made. And with a third connection back there, it got really tight. I was trying to solder them. They didn't work right. I was overheating the, the switches and and screwed a couple of them up and so i just said screw it ordered these ones um i would like the led ones just because it would let you know at a glance if you had left something on but again it's not a big deal so this here wired in through that switch like i said is the renogy wanderer 10 amp solar charge controller I don't know if any of you guys have any experience with this one. If anybody does, let me know. Basically, what I want to know is, is there a way to get this display to stay on a specific reading? So see how that switches? It goes between amps and voltage for um, your solar, your battery, and your load. And it just constantly switches between them all. Um, and so when I was trying to hook this up to where basically... I could take a 
power supply, I have the little um, Will Prowse recommended um, variable power supply to set up and basically simulate PV power that I was using on this. I wanted to basically just have it on the PV amp screen and then basically be able to adjust and I couldn't, I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm just being picky, but I don't know if there's a way to, to do that or not. Obviously I could just run the, I could buy the little RS-232 Bluetooth adapter and just watch everything with Bluetooth. But my thoughts with some of this stuff is it's nice to be able to use this stuff and have it work if Bluetooth and so on and so forth is not available. Um, like if your phones don't work, stuff like that, then how are you going to watch all of this stuff? I still want to be able to watch all of this stuff if I don't have a phone or I don't have connection, service, whatever, what have you, so on and so forth. Um, call me old school, but I like having the, the ability to watch it all without having to be connected wirelessly to something that may or may not work when I need it to. Um, so anyway, that has just barely enough room. I just put an XT60 on here. Again, those would go out to the solar panels. And then these, the only thing I have to remember is just to make sure that that is switched on before I connect the solar panels. So um, obviously that's, that's a, a thing to watch out for. There is a little bag right back here. I just tucked in some extra. There's a, they almost make like a little, there's a little recess right back in here. It gives you, it's perfect to be able to grab. You can kind of see it here on the front. It's basically it works as a perfect handhold to be able to grab this battery and, and lift it out. But it also works to take a little pack of spare fuses and tuck them in there out of the way. So um, everything that feeds that is all 12 gauge um or 10 gauge sorry 10 gauge that feeds power in and then it's 12 gauge going out except for the little bluetooth amp it didn't need that big a wire so um so everything is extremely tight it does fit in there it is able to completely lock down obviously it is not waterproof but you're not really going to be setting your phone or your tablet or your laptop or whatever out to charge in the rain anyway. So there's no real need to have them 100% waterproof. So that is my latest portable solar generator. Um, I do also have a, we'll call it a mobile solar generator here at the house that I built. Um, it's on an SOK 100 amp hour battery. It's got a 2000 watt inverter. Um, I'll do a video on that later, another separate video. That piece or that generator right there, other than the two um, lights, overhead lights, um, that is what's running everything else that I'm using down here. So it all comes in through this power plug. It's all run up through there. And I have another power strip down here if I need some extra power. But those all run right over there and down and plug into that inverter. So other than just the little overhead lights, um, everything else down here, including my TV, um, is all run off of the solar power. And then that is connected to those two panels out on my patio. Those are 325 watt. I think they're aqua blue or aqua solar. Um, 325 watt panels so there's 650 watts outside that keep that battery topped off no problem so I do want to build a bigger I'm probably going to order up some 280 amp hour Eve cells and a BMS and DIY a bigger battery for that um, and then we'll just repurpose the SOK I don't know maybe I'll toss that in my RV or something like that we'll see but um, again I can do I can do a more in-depth video on on that later um, if you guys want but this is my portable one so i know this video ran a little long appreciate you guys sticking around appreciate all you other guys out here doing videos because not only has it helped me to learn but it's also inspired me to do it myself so again thank you all um and we'll hopefully see you on the next one thanks guys